In this lesson, we're going to look at code that causes exceptions and strategies on how to fix them. These are common Java exceptions. It's not the list of all common Java exceptions though. I'm focusing this video on exceptions in the Java Lang package. I saw one tongue-in-cheek description of an arithmetic exception. We're asking the computer to solve a math problem that we couldn't solve. And in some ways, that's kind of right. An arithmetic exception happens when we try to do something wrong, like divide integers by zero. That's the most common error. The thing that throws everyone off is there's no exception thrown when you divide floating point numbers. Another place we'll see this exception is using the big decimal class. The idea behind that class is to hold any number regardless of how big it is. Of course, if we divide one by three, we'll get a repeating decimal. No computer can hold an infinite number of digits. The default for big decimal is to represent the class exactly. To fix this, we need to find some type of rounding. So we need to change our division to include a precision and a rounding mode like this. In short, if we get an arithmetic exception, we'll want to focus on why the values didn't work. Usually, the exception will give us a hint to why it failed. We've already seen this error many times. An array index out of bounds exception happens when we try to access an element in an array that does not exist. So if our array is five elements and we try to access the sixth element, which doesn't exist, we get this exception. It can happen when we forget to account for zero-based arrays. The error message tells us exactly which index failed, so it should be easy to see where our off by one error is. The best way to solve this exception is to avoid accessing elements by index. We do that like this. If we must use indexes, we'll want to look for off by one errors, usually in the stopping condition of the loop. A cast class exception happens when we try to cast a class as a type that isn't a supertype or subtype. In our code, we told Java our object here's a string. Java assumed we knew what we were doing, but when Java tried to convert our string object to an integer, well, bad things happen. When you cast an object as a class, it really must be a super or subtype of that class. We'll see this when we have collections with different object types. This one's pretty easy to solve. Try to keep our collection classes homogeneous or be very careful about casting. We can force the cast not found exception by calling for name in the class class. This is a checked exception, so we have to catch it. If Java can't find the class in our class path, it gives up and throws us error. We'd likely see this error when loading third-party libraries by string name. For example, if we need to load a database driver for use with JDBC, we often just pass the class name of the driver as a string. If this class cannot be found in the class path, we get this exception. The solution is to first make sure we spell the class name correctly. If it's correct, we need to make sure the class or the jar containing the class is in our class path. Clone not supported exception happens when we call the clone method on an object that doesn't support cloning. The clone method isn't all that common. Cloning has a whole list of problems, but here's the code for cloning an object. It's a checked exception, so we have to wrap it in a try catch. However, if we get this error, and we did expect the class to be cloned, the likely problem is the class we're trying to clone does not implement the clonable interface. It's a marker interface, so it's often forgotten. In this example, main application doesn't implement the clonable interface. Java won't let us clone something that isn't explicitly clonable. An illegal argument exception happens when we pass an argument that is syntactically correct but does not make sense in the context. For example, when we call the two characters method on the character class, we pass an integer which maps to a particular character. So if we pass it 100, we'll return the character D. Pass it minus one, which is not a valid ASCII code, we'll get an illegal argument exception. Minus one is a valid integer, but it's not a valid number for this method. To fix this, we need to make sure the value we're sending is a valid value. The null pointer exception is the most common Java exception. The ironic thing is, there's no pointers in Java, only references. Anyways, this happens when you have a reference to a class that doesn't point to anything. We might have forgotten to assign the class instance before using it, or more commonly, we're using a class instance that's a parameter to a method, and whoever called the method just sent null. 
If there's any possibility our class instance can be null, we must always check for a value before using it. This is a best practice for defensive programming. The other way to fix this is to use Java optionals. We'll have several videos on optionals later, but for now, no, there are a way to avoid null pointer exceptions. Number format exceptions often turn up when we're getting input from a user. We'll ask the user, how old are you? And they'll answer, strawberry. When you try to turn strawberry into a number, we get a number format exception. This is really an exception we'll need to handle if we can ever be uncertain of the input. It's a good example for exception handling, because bad data from our users should not ca crash our application. Users can always enter bad data when they can. We need to add code that prompts the user to try again or maybe try a, diff a default value. It depends on what our program requirements are. The no class def found error is slightly different from the class not found exception. When we got the class not found exception, we were trying to find a class by string name. No class def found error means Java can't find the class at runtime, but it was present at compile time. The way this often happens is not all the jars required to run the Java application were included in the deployment. Either the class path is incorrect or the class file we need is missing. I often see this error when two developers compile an application with different versions of a third-party library. This is an infuriating error that often trips up new Java programmers working in a team. What will happen is everyone will agree to use Java version, say Java 7. Then someone will use Java 8 for their jar anyway. When everyone tr using Java 7 tries to use the Java 8 jar, you get the unsupported class version error. In short, a higher version of Java is used to compile the class, and we're trying to run the class on a lower version of the Java runtime. The solution is to verify the Java compile version for our application matches the Java version we're trying to run our application on. Okay, that's some of the common exceptions we'll see when creating Java programs. I'll cover other common exceptions when we get to different Java packages. So put any questions you have in the comments below. Liking the video lets me know what I'm doing right. So if you like the video, you know what to do. And with that, I'll see you in the next tutorial.